scale building is building some truck with leaf springs, just so you know how bad it can actually be. Welcome back to the Scale Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. Today we're taking a first look, run, and review of the new Boom Racing BRX02. And this is the Leaf Sprung Edition. Um, and you're probably, purists are probably rolling in their graves because the Defender was never on Leaf Springs. Well, at least not this one. Uh, the Series 2A and Series 3, I think those were on Leaf Springs. Um, so this isn't a completely accurate chassis for this body style, but we're going to let it slide because this is an absolutely excellent leaf sprung chassis, which I know isn't saying much, but in terms of other available leaf sprung chassis, this one is the pinnacle. This is what every other chassis maker who's trying to do leaf springs should aspire to. Boom Racing absolutely 100% knocked it out of the park on this one. And while there are a few quirks, uh, I would say that it's certainly top of the list. If you are looking to get into a leaf sprung chassis, there is no better place to start. And yes, this sounds like it's going to be a shining review, and it probably will be. Uh, there is a lot of really excellently engineered and well-machined and well-manufactured parts to put into this kit. And as it comes, it is not cheap. You are paying for that premium, but I will say it is 100% worth it. Only if to avoid any frustration in terms of building and the assembly and the final product. They really did their homework on this one and there's a lot of stuff to cover. So let's stop dilly dallying and get right into it. As this kit comes, it comes with the option of getting a hard body. Uh, this hard body in this case is the Team Raffi D110. You can get either the SUV wagon style or you can get a double cab pickup style. That's basically the same body, they just change the roof line and do a couple of different things different in the back here, but they are essentially the same. Uh, opening hood, opening doors, on all corners with nice little magnet enclosures so they stay reasonably uh, closed and in place which is nice some of them are a little tighter than others uh rear uh, door also opens um yep there we go just like that as you can see nice full interior as well um driver figure not included that's one of mine um but a very nicely detailed body it's not completely perfectly accurate to a Land Rover Defender. I don't think it is a licensed body, but it's a pretty darn good example. And there are a ton of fiddly bits. Uh, everything from mirrors and wipers to uh, little uh, mesh guards for a lot of the inlets or outtakes. A nice looking uh, headlight buckets and uh, lights, grill, um, all kinds of nice little scale details. The interior is excellent and is full flat floor. Uh, really nice molded seats and details on the dashboard as well. It really was a lot of work <laughs> to put it together and to get it look like this. Uh, I chose Arden Green, which is an actual automotive Land Rover color. Uh, it's for Range Rovers, but I figured, you know what, let's stick it on a Land Rover too. Uh, black gloss top and black gloss fenders as well. I thought that kind of classed it up a, a notch if you will uh nicely detailed uh, tail tailgate section as well lots of bits and pieces there spare tire mount uh, lots of light lenses and metal bumpers that are designed specifically for this body uh, but are included on the brx02 chassis so there you go that's a good look at the body um one other really nice note about that body uh while there are screws uh, right here and here. That's not how the body's mounted. It's actually a quick release spring mounted system. And uh, <laughs> that comes off so darn easy. It's crazy. Uh, really, really, really makes it uh, a complete package. And uh, because of the odd wheelbase of the BRX02, it really is designed for these Team Raffi bodies. So if you are going to do one, I recommend you get one of the bodies. Otherwise, you're going to be dealing with this sort of like, I don't even know what it is. It's a long wheelbase, like 
13 and a quarter inches or something, uh, 13 and a half almost. So it's not gonna fit any other standard bodies out there. If you're not looking to do a Land Rover uh, inaccurately, <laughs> get the coil version. Uh, and then you can put the Land Rover body on and it's totally fine because they were on coils. Um, otherwise you will be doing some sort of custom body. I'm just gonna put this aside for a moment and we can talk about the chassis itself. Uh, one of the things that people first noticed when this chassis came out was that it was on carbon fiber rails, uh, which is certainly unique uh, in a scale kind of market. But I have a really strong suspicion as to why they ended up going with a carbon fiber rail. And I think that is partially due to the weight of the body. These are not lightweight. These are scale accurate trucks and they weigh an absolute ton. So putting a carbon fiber rail on this chassis is going to reduce the weight overall uh, and actually not put it where you want it up high, <laughs> but it's fine. I think that they were looking at trying to keep the weight down to a minimum and still allow these leaf springs to actually flex. And speaking of, there is a tremendously good amount of flexibility in these leaf springs. The design of this chassis compensates for a lot of the shortcomings of a leaf sprung chassis. Typically, you do not get a lot of flex out of a leaf sprung chassis. It's just the nature of how these trucks work. And especially when you try to scale something down like this, it's not gonna give you much flex. That said, there is a pretty good amount of flex in this chassis and they built these leaves in such a way uh, that they just, they work. They cycle really, really well. I'm really, really impressed with the amount of flexibility that's in there. And one of the really cool things about this chassis is that it includes anti-wrap bars, both front and rear. And now anti-wrap uh, is essentially what happens on a leaf sprung chassis is that if ever it gets bound up and it starts bouncing its way through an obstacle and tries to like roll the whole axle housing around, it torques it all the way around, bending all the leaves and ruining it completely. Boom Racing thought of that and included anti-wrap bars front and rear. So the axles cannot turn or torque against the leaves and bend them. It's a pretty phenomenal system and one that has to be an aftermarket add-on for any of the other leaf sprung chassis out there. They really did their homework on that and it's really nice to see that. Speaking more to uh, the quality of the axles, these are Boom Racing fat axles. They are an all metal construction, so they are quite heavy, uh, but they are very well put together and pre-assembled out of the box. Saves you a lot of trouble of putting them together uh, yourself. Uh, they are expertly put together and I opened one up just to make sure that they were nicely oiled and greased and they definitely were. Really nice to see that. Uh, they do have multiple settings for the leaf spring packs so you can set them up to be more firm or less firm uh, depending on what body uh, kit you've got going on there. They have recommendations. It's really easy to swap them out. You don't have to take the whole axle off. <laughs> you can just uh, unscrew these bottom screws and change your leaf packs as you go which is really nice feature to see. There is a two-speed transmission with divorce transfer case included. Uh, does keep the motor fairly low in the chassis, not super low, but does leave plenty of room up front here for a scale motor cover if you wanted to uh, invest some time and effort into making one of those or finding one online to print and put over that uh, 540 can motor. Uh, you've got a lot of option for that. If you wanted to go to a larger motor, they compensated for that too. And you could put a larger can motor in there without any trouble whatsoever. It would not interfere with any of the other mechanicals. Really nice to see that as well. Uh, the two speed is powered by a micro servo that they do include. Uh, it's uh, some sort of uh, brand I've never heard of, um, but uh, seems to be working so far. Uh, and uh, there is a Pretty big gap between the crawl mode and the second speed uh, speed mode, if you want to call it that. Uh, so lots of room there, which is really, really good. It's very easy for you to set your pinion. They've set it up very well precision engineered here. So whatever pinion you choose, there is a number that corresponds to it. And you basically level it out uh, with the steps in there. And uh, that's how you set your pinion. It's a pretty ingenious system, works very well. Uh, nice and compact unit, uh, all metal gears, all metal construction for that matter, uh, and very, very strong. Uh, it just works. It's, it's really nice, uh, good, good looking transmission. 
Uh, it could stand to be a little bit lower, but um, I think that they kind of built this to uh, introduce a motor cover. Uh, so you probably, that's the height they wanted to have it, which makes a lot of sense. Servo mounted on chassis. Uh, I've got one of the Reefs RC Operation 11 Charlie um, high power servos in there. It's a raw 500. Uh, so it's getting a fair amount of torque. Uh, probably more than a leaf sprung truck needs, but uh, this was the first place that I found to put that servo and I wanted to make sure I was putting good quality electronics in there. Uh, so we've got a Torque Master Expert 540 can. That is a 27 turn motor, so a little more hot uh, than normal. Connected to a Hobby Wing Quick Run 1060, uh, which is a perfectly acceptable ESC for this setup. Uh, Boom Racing does put a lot of emphasis on the quality of a chassis, uh, and uh, it's certainly evident here. Uh, one of the cool things about it is each one is numbered individually and come with a little plaque that goes on the electronics box. Um, just because of the length of some of the wires that I already had, I just put all my electronics on the battery tray. I run very small uh, 850 milliamp hour Helios batteries, so that actually fits in there really nicely, uh, all on the battery tray with all of the electronics, as you can see there. I'm not actually using the electronics box, uh, but it is a waterproof box, so if you wanted to, certainly put um, you know your older non-waterproof electronics in that box. Along with that VIN number and uh, and a chassis plaque, you also get individualized license plates specifically with the number of the kit that you have. So I've got the 83rd kit uh, for Leaf Sprung. That's what the L stands for. Kind of cool that they include that. Pretty trick. One thing that is not included with this chassis are these inner fenders. And those are specific to the Land Rover body. Um, but uh, they are 3D printed and in a nice SLA printed nylon. Uh, very, very strong and rigid and uh, really help kind of sell the overall look. And for the most part, hide that carbon fiber chassis. I know a lot of people were complaining about the fact that it was carbon fiber, but for all intents and purposes, you don't actually see it when you're driving the truck. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, finally, uh, shocks that are included, I think they do hold oil, but because it's leaf sprung, you don't really need to have any oil in there. All of the damping is provided just by the fact that the shocks are on there. That flat skid uh, is also a 3D printed element. Uh, this is metal, but these are 3D printed. And you can see how they integrate really nicely with the metal drive shafts. And it's just a nice smooth belly. There's not a lot going on down there and uh, keeps it all very, very clean. Really like that. The quick release body mounts are a godsend. I hate screwing and unscrewing a body uh, or not even having it on there very well. This is a really very good system and uh, works really well. Because of the length of the chassis, obviously the electronics wiring does need to be quite long. Boom Racing does include a few servo extension wires so you can get them all the way to the back of that uh, electronics box if you were going to use it. Um, so that's nice that they include that. Wheels and tires are great, uh, very period correct for an old school Land Rover like the one that's included in this kit. Uh, I really like them and they, the scale details are great. The actual caps are screw on uh, so you can actually get to the nut underneath uh, without having to see it all the time, which is really, really trick. I like that a lot. Really, really nice setup. Uh, overall, uh, it's pretty excellent for a leaf sprung truck. You've been watching driving footage throughout. It is certainly more trail truck than it is rock crawler by any means, but it's a very good looking trail truck. And really, in my opinion, based on the fit and finish and the quality of the materials, more than worth the price of entry for a kit like this. It is more expensive than most, but you really do get what you pay for, and I'm always a big fan of saying that. If you're looking for a high quality, easy to construct kit that's going to be loaded with premium materials and be pretty accurate, um, despite the fact that, you know, Land Rover Defenders weren't on Leaf Springs. Uh, if, you're <laughs> if you're looking for a good base for your next Leaf Sprung build, in an odd wheelbase, this is certainly the one for you. If you want to have a coil spring defender, by all means, get the coil spring kit. You won't be disappointed. It's gonna be pretty much exactly the same, except added performance of coil spring suspension. Are you a fan of not doing very well? Are you a fan of having to pick up your truck a lot? Are you a fan of leaf springs like I am? 
If you are, put a comment down below. I love reading through your feedback and I try to answer as many of them as I can. And if you're enjoying this video and you like run review first looks like this, hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already and ring that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. I hope you've been enjoying the running footage throughout this video. Thought I'd mix it up and try that on this one. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed this truck. I think it's really fantastic. It was just such an absolute pleasure to put together and uh, build something that took a bit more time. It was not a quick build by any means, but certainly worth it in my opinion. I'm very happy with the end result. I'll put links down below where you can pick up this truck. Uh, I think it's a fantastic choice if you're looking to get into a high quality premium leaf sprung kit. I don't think there's much else that competes with this. It's uh, really in a class of its own. I think that's going to do it. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, there will be a lot more content coming, uh, so stay tuned for that. See you again soon.